Oh, just trying to imagine the day when I stand in the middle of St Nicholas Church once more and everything is around me and I can invite you to be part of me and oh my word isn't it strange that sometimes when we dream about something it actually comes true and here I am in the middle of St Nicholas Church in Codsall so a very warm welcome to you all as today we continue our story of someone else who was a bit like a dreamer like me we began the story last week the story of Joseph now I don't know how much you remember about that story but I thought I'd recap on a few things Joseph was the youngest of a large family of brothers. I wonder if you can remember how many brothers. It was more than five. In fact, he had 11 brothers. And Joseph was a bit of a daydreamer. And his brothers used to get really fed up with him. And one of the things that he dreamed about was the day he would receive this wonderful, colourful, beautiful, brand new coat. And lo and behold, one day his father presented him with the coat. But the brothers were jealous and they were angry. And when they went out together one day, poor Joseph got shoved down a hole. And then eventually a man came and they sold him for 20 silver coins and off Joseph went as a slave in Egypt. Well, Joseph spent quite a long time in prison when he got to Egypt. Things did change for him though when something special happened. You see, the king in Egypt, he too used to have lots of dreams and he could never work out what any of them meant. And then one day, Joseph got told about one of these dreams and straight away he knew exactly what it meant. And eventually he got to tell the king what the dream meant. Well, he said the dream really means that for the next seven years, you will have lots of things in your harvest fields, lots of fresh food, lots of fresh grain, lots of fresh fish, lots of healthy animals for seven whole years. But the next seven years, oh dear, the next seven years, there will be a shortage of food and your animals will starve and so will your people and no one will have fresh food to eat and a lot of people will die. Well, the king actually believed Joseph and decided to do something about it. So he decided to put Joseph in charge. After all, he seemed to know exactly what the dreams were about. And so they built bigger and bigger store barns. And in the barns, they gathered up all the food that was being produced. And all the special stuff went straight into the barns. So that if the famine should happen, in the next seven years, there would be food enough for all. Well, for seven years, they couldn't believe their luck. 
Every harvest was better than the one before. There was more wheat and grain being produced. The cows were so fat. The sheep were so woolly. It was wonderful. But things changed really quickly. And for the next seven years, oh dear, locusts, wind, rain, everything that could go wrong went wrong and food becomes scarcer and scarcer. But you know, the king was really pleased. He'd been very wise. He'd listened to Joseph and he got all this extra food in these big barns. The problem was that it wasn't just Egypt that was struggling for food. Everywhere had a problem getting food, including Joseph's family, his father and his 11 brothers. Well, actually, there were now 12 brothers because another child had been born. So Joseph had another brother called Benjamin. So eventually, Joseph's family decided they needed food and they needed more than they could get locally. So they decided that the brothers would all go to Egypt and ask for more food. Well, Joseph's father was a bit concerned because he'd already lost one son didn't want to lose another one and so he said to the oldest 11 brothers well you can go but Benjamin well Benjamin must stay here and so off they went their father was anxious but still they needed to have food so they went to see the person in charge of all the barns. And they walked into this magna magnificent room. And there, sitting on a wonderful throne, was their brother, Joseph. But you know, they didn't recognise Joseph after all this time. And in fact, they probably did think that Joseph was dead. And, but Joseph recognised them as soon as they walked into the room. He knew they were his brothers. And he began to wonder, were they still jealous? Were they still cruel? And he decided that he would set them a test. But that is for next week. So today's craft is an Egyptian headdress. And we're going to be making it using a piece of card and some coloured paper. We begin by on the large piece of card making the shape of the headdress and you'll find the bits that I've marked out are the bits that you cut and you end up with something like this and then really the fun begins you take strips of coloured paper and you start gluing them on to the headdress like this. So then with each strip that you add you make sure that you can have as many colours as you like. There we are, one more colour added. When you've completed the whole of the headdress then you simply snip off around the shape. And there is your headset. 
Now then, it's not completed yet because it needs to be able to sit on your head. So a strip of paper, just again stuck on around the back like so, so that it can go on the top of your head. And then we end up with something that looks a bit like this. Now, doesn't that look grand? And can't you just imagine being in Egypt and all of the wonderful things that might happen to you there when you're wearing your very best headband? So I hope that you've enjoyed today's craft and uh, make it as glittery and grand as you like. And I look forward to seeing the pictures of you wearing your headband. So from Dan and myself, I hope you have a great week. It's been lovely spending time with you. Bye. <laughs>